Well, like a lot of people, I played sport um, to varying levels at both high school and college. Um, ended up playing soccer to a fairly high degree, um, getting trials for some of the Premier League teams. At that time, there wasn't a great deal of money in, in sport, so I decided it probably wouldn't be a great career move. But being part of that sort of soccer lifestyle, I was exposed to physical therapy and physiotherapists on a regular basis with various injuries. And I was amazed just how quickly they were able to get me back on the field in a very short space of time. But I was also amazed at how they worked on prevention. They weren't just interested in getting me better. They were also trying to teach me how not to get injured again, some of the stretches I could do, some of the strengthening I could do to specific muscles that would help me become not only a better player, but also stay off the treatment table. Well, there's a lot of breakthroughs coming through. We continue to fight for professional autonomy within the healthcare field. We you know, tend to get encroached by either chiropractors, personal trainers, athletic trainers. So we're trying to make sure that when people use the word physical therapy, that it is in fact physical therapy that the patient is receiving and, and not something else. We're working very hard on um, evidence-based practice so that anything we do with a patient actually works for the patient. And that means sometimes removing some of the techniques we used to do that are no longer effective and replacing them that, that are, you know, tend to be more effective in, in that respect. We tend to be looking at outcomes. If in many ways we're trying to be more accountable for what we do, and the best way to do that is to show that we're having an impact, certainly a positive impact on our patients and saying that they are actually getting better. And we do that using these outcome measures where the patients report their pain, function, and so on and so forth before the treatment and then after the treatment. And hopefully you see a good uh, deal of improvement. Obviously, all the time, new breakthroughs coming through in any kind of healthcare field. There's always new information coming through. And I think one of the hardest things from any student is trying to keep ahead of all that information that's coming through. So what I try and do when I write my books is try and keep the student current so they don't have to go scrambling around to find out what all the latest research articles are. And we're always trying to push the boundaries with regard to getting people better quicker. And the only way we can do that is by using techniques and treatments that work and have been proven to work. And then we test that by using what we call outcome measures, which is a way of showing to the public if a person has a shoulder injury, how many visits does it take for that particular person to get better. I think it's a movement that's been going on for, for many years now. I think we're now getting to the point where we're actually documenting it. The World Health Organization has been pushing for a long time for people to become more physically active due to the sort of the conditions that can be caused with inactivity, diabetes, heart conditions and so on and so forth. We as PTs have always tried to stress functional independence with patients, make sure they're much more physically active. We try and encourage them as much as possible to not only do their therapy exercises to get them better from a particular condition, but also to take a healthy lifestyle. We use that sort of phrase holistic with a W to look at how we treat patients. We don't sort of just treat them for what they're there for. We're trying to prevent them from coming back, but we're also trying to make sure that they stay healthy and fit. Every student learns a different way. I remember I was one of these people that would learn by watching somebody. I could watch somebody do a joint mobilization technique, and I was able to learn how to do that technique just by watching them. Other people learn in different ways. Some people like to see it in text, describe where the hand placements go on and so on and so forth. And I think what we try and do is we, if we can give the students as much information as possible with regard to how to do a particular technique, whether it's being watching videos, whether it's watching um, students doing it in practice themselves, a large part of the learning in, in physical therapy school is not in the classroom, it's actually outside of the classroom where students get together, they practice all the various techniques because the information is given to you fairly quickly. One week you're learning the information, the next week you have to be examined with it, whether that be doing a practical demonstration or whether that be doing a written examination. So I think the more tools that an instructor has, the easier it makes his job or her job. Well, I think the biggest fear as a student is when you finally graduate, you have all this class knowledge 
and you have all these techniques and skills that you've learned, but you're a little concerned as to whether you're gonna be able to put these into practice with a real life patient. And I think sometimes uh, students particularly worry too much about that. I remember a particular incident when I was a, a student therapist, I was called to see a patient bedside. I was doing an inpatient rotation and the patient that had been admitted the day before with a diagnosis of a stroke. And I went in there, talked to him, and he was asking me all kinds of questions about, is this gonna get better, so on and so forth. And I said, well, you know, these things can take time. They can take anything from a few days to, to a year. I said, what we'll see is we'll see how we can progress you. We did some exercises. We did the, the things that we do in, in, in inpatient physical therapy. And I came back the next day and he, he was amazed. He, you know, he felt so much better. And, and, and to this day, I think he believed it was the physical therapy that helped him. And yet it probably wasn't. It was probably Mother Nature doing its job. But I, somehow I must have given him some form of confidence that he was going to get better. And I think in that respect, students have to always realize it's not always the skills and the, and the practices you do. It's often sometimes the bedside manner that's just as important to the patient. Well, let me start with the orthopedic book. Um, every time I try and do a new edition, I try and add new content to each chapter. So it's not the same book, just regurgitated. Um, we have new videos. We have a lot of information on how the body responds to stress, how it adapts to stress and how it heals from damage. So there's a lot more information we know on the cellular level. We know a lot more about pain now. I think we're all aware of what acute pain is. You touch something hot, you move your hand because it hurts. But chronic pain is a little bit more complex. Why do some people heal? Why do others not? Why do some people get pain that lasts longer than normal? So what I've tried to do is introduce some of the concepts of that into the new edition of the orthopedic book in the hope that you know people can keep current with what's going on. We've got a whole um, new area on pain. So I've introduced a lot of new topics with regard to pain transmission, how it manifests, how it's controlled. We have expanded versions on concussion, um, which is another area that's causing a lot of concern for obvious reasons. And then there's also my last chapter, which is what I call my special populations chapter, where I try and focus on a particular sport, whether it be tennis, whether it be throwing, whether it be um, cycling, and then try and give some indication as to what you need to do for those particular individuals. The skills book, um, a lot of it by its very nature are, are covering fundamental skills, the first things you learn as a, as a student physical therapist. What has changed probably more dramatically than the basic things of manual muscle testing, goniometry, are the administrative things, such as documentation, insurances, the roles and responsibilities of the therapist over the years that have changed, the history of the APTA and how it's changed. But I also try and give the reader a flavor of what's coming down the pipeline with regard to some of the newer stuff that they will be exposed to further down the curriculum. I think it's a great tool. I mean, if nothing else, you have this ease of access. It's online. You have a host of um, textbooks. You have a host of videos, pictures. I like the fact that it has a search function. You know, unlike when you're using a textbook, you've got to go in the index and then try and find the various pages. You use a search engine on it and any online content, and you're pulled up with all the various categories that, that fall under that particular area. And I think in that respect, it's very easy to use. And I think the other thing is it tends to expose students to textbooks that may not be on their professor's list. So it may be a, a textbook on neurology that their particular professor hasn't decided they should be reading. And that gives them a different perspective, maybe a, a different description about something that they didn't understand reading the original text, but now hearing it in a different way helps them understand. Well, as I mentioned with regard to the number of texts that are available with Access PT, we also have an online product which helps the students prepare for the National Physical Licensure Examination, which is vital for them to get into practice with. And what we try and do every year is we try and add more and more questions to the test bank so that the students can have more and more questions to, to sort of be asked about, and that prepares them better for the examination. For example, this year, we're adding another 400 questions to the test bank, which is almost more than um, an exam and a half worth of questions. 
You would think in this day and age that people will be moving to more online content. Um, but I, I think we're finding is that people like the physical copy of a textbook. It's kind of like the Kindle phenomenon. People like to read the actual book, the paperback from a news agent rather than just getting it on a digital. Some people like the smell of paper, the feel of paper. So I think at the moment people are still using you know, textbooks, but I think the, the, the thing that, that they need to realize is that obviously these textbooks are fairly large, they're fairly hard to carry around. So I think we're slowly gonna to start to see people move more and more towards an online content.